Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am burnt and peeling. Now, you might ask me, you might say, Dr. Simmons, were you out fishing again? And I would say, yes, I was out fishing. F fishing for them good video ideas. Ah! One subscribe equals one fish. Brian Ferry. I think that we can start there. Pretty cool guy. The whole of Roxy Music have always been a remarkably creative band and an inspiration to thousands that would follow them. They debuted as a very art house, artsy, glam rock band, but during their entire eight record lifespan, they almost completely reinvented themselves, changed their sound, and in doing so, discovered the greatest genre of all time. Sophistapop is a great category example of the merging of genres. It's sort of like a smoother new wave sound mixed with definite jazz inspiration, as well as the occasional R&B and soul influence. The music is often more complicated and sophisticated, as the name implies, but still very lush, with lyrical elements that are often incredibly melancholic and romantic. So then comes the question of today. How did a very artsy, glitzy, glam rock band find their way into lush, orchestrated, jazzy sophistopop? Well, as with most progressions, this one had a start, and the story begins in 1975 with the band's record Siren. Siren, for whatever reason, I hear often lumped in as this mid-period transitional area for the band, and as such, it's often quite forgotten or overlooked. But what I really want to draw attention to is the subtle progression that happens throughout this record. Now, unlike many of their contemporaries, Roxy Music never really created a concept record or a record that has a clear story or progression. But this is about as close as they get because the opening and closing tracks of the record are certainly linked thematically. The record opens with one of their bigger hits, and in fact, their biggest hit here in America, Love is the Drug. This is a very hedonistic song, and it shows Brian Ferry portraying a character that sees love as sort of a commodity, and when addicted to love, all you need to do is heed that addiction. I'm sure we can all agree it's a pretty great song, but now we can look at the conclusion to the record. Lyrically, Just Another High is clearly the natural conclusion of the opening song. Just another crazy guy playing at love was another high. Such a crazy high. As if now we see the maturation of the character. And in that more mature approach to writing, we see the first steps that the band took in their progression towards Sophistopop. As not only is the song more musically very lush, especially compared to a lot of the more angular textures found elsewhere on the record, but lyrically it's certainly more melancholic. And that leads us to the band's next album, the incredibly underappreciated Manifesto. Now let's take a quick pause here, because I have no idea why this album is trashed as often as it is. Maybe it's because it has the song Trash, or maybe because, unlike their entire discography, which features women as the focal point of the album sleeves, this one clearly centers on Andrew Tate. Here we have two examples of outright Sophistapop songs with Dance Away and Angel Eyes. Both of these songs are quintessential Sophistapop in arrangement, conception, and execution, but the same goes with many of the songs off the following record, Flesh and Blood. Another record that I think is criminally underappreciated. I mean, it has one of their best songs in their entire catalog with Same Old Scene. But now comes the moment that we were all waiting for. The eighth Roxy Music album, one of the most atmospheric, romantic, and ethereal records of its time, Avalon. And if we can call the music Sophistopop, we could equally call the title Sophistopop because it's actually pretty cool. Because Avalon is a paradise, it's a mythical land in the story of King Arthur. And in the story, Arthur is gravely wounded and is taken to the land of Avalon to recover from his injuries. And we can put that into the context of this record. So often we think of these paradises or these uh, mythical lands as places of desire. But as Brian Ferry rightly shows us throughout this record, we don't get to those paradises by desire. We get there through our suffering and through our losses. Brian Ferry certainly knows this and isn't holding back with the opening song off this album, one of the most well-known singles from the band's discography, More Than This. You could basically sum up the whole album with that line. Because this whole album, as atmospheric, lush, and romantic as it is, more than anything, shows you the melancholy in life and relationships. Take a Chance With Me is a sublime example of this, with Ferry crooning, As they say, two can play, but keep that song away from me. In my time, too much love made me sad for so long. And True To Life is gorgeous. From the wonderful use of vocal production and layering, to the lyrics that are a remarkably inspiring, arguably autobiographical look at Brian Ferry's life. People tell me, be determined, poor country boy. Too much luck means too much trouble, much time alone. But arm in arm with my seaside diamond, I'll soon be home. Now in case you didn't know, Brian Ferry is certainly not an example of someone who was born into fame. 
He was actually brought up in a working class family, and it always seemed to me that through his music, and this album in particular, he wanted to be in a Fitzgerald novel, to be that well-dressed, respected, sophisticated person he portrays specifically in these songs. But as with examples such as True to Life, it seems that Brian Ferry is clearly drawing a distinction between the world that he wishes he was in and the world that actually exists. It almost seems like through the heartbreak and the loss that is portrayed throughout this record, Brian Ferry is yearning for and looking for that paradise to be on the other side, but still doesn't quite seem to make it there. And who knows, maybe Avalon is merely a fantasy world. But Roxy Music created a way to experience the allure whenever we please, and I know I am certainly grateful for that. And on top of that, they discovered the greatest genre of, of all time, Stamp of Approval. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you have enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you're a sophisticated brailer, check out my video on Prefab Sprout for some more Sophistapop. Thanks for watching the video, and uh, let's keep this music alive. When I was a kid watching all these great jazz players and so on, they always wore suits and looked cool and smart. And I remember people like Duke Ellington, you know, and they'd say, like, well, you know, it's important that you look your best when you go on stage. And yeah. That, that kind of had a spin-off. Well, it's often a working class thing as well, isn't it? Just kind of, you know, yeah, yeah. look sharp. Oh, you look know, sharp, that yeah. Just look sharp, look away. Yeah, yeah. He's my a mother style... would have been embarrassed if I hadn't He's a style <laughs> icon to you as yeah, well, Yeah, very it? much, very much. And, and I was actually quite surprised that you oh, were so... <laughs> 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 you actually were. <laughs>